A paintbrush is held in an artist's hand. He is writing a Bible verse which represents the mission history of Korea. It begins with the words, How beautiful! The artist's passionate hand brushes down the Bible verse into a piece of art. This is Romans chapter 10, verse 15. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. 130 years ago, the history of beautiful feet began in this land. It's the history of their feet that have gladly taken on those black rubber shoes. Their footsteps are written in our forgotten history. Yosu is a city of delicacy surrounded by the ocean. There, a young one stands with layers and layers of Christian history. It's famous as the place which martyrs Hun Young Won served. Next to A Young Won, there is A Young Hospital, which opened in 1926. It looks like a regular old hospital. But on one wall, there is a mural displaying the history of this hospital. A healed leper is kneeling in front of Jesus dressed in hanbok. On another wall, there are pictures of the real proprietors of this hospital. Their faces are distorted from a horrible disease called Hansen's disease. Among them, there is a picture of Elder Lee Dong-hoon. A young one once moved from Gwangju to Yeosu and was built to treat Hansen's disease patients. The doctor, which Elder Lee remembers, is missionary Topol, who came to Aeyangwon in 1959. Topol 원장님은 환자들 이렇게 고운 냄새를 많이 맡고 그랬어요. 그래갖고 많이 상태가 좋은가 안 좋은가 그때도 그랬어요. 그 정도로 이제 우리 환자들 사랑하고 환자 입에서 너무 좋은 일을 많이 하고 그랬어요. 다리고 털이고 그 상태도 딱 뛰어갖고는 커로 앉아가요. 냄새는 나타나요. 어디가 내 자식이, 내 동생, 내 친척이, 어디가 그렇게 주는 사람이 어디가 있다요. He was an unforgettable doctor to his patients. His Korean name, 도성래. Stanley Topol was a young doctor who arrived here on his 27th birthday. He served as a director in charge for 22 years with Hansen's disease patients. The old main hospital building was turned into Aeyangwon History Museum. Visitors are able to meet with the times past through old hospital gadgets and pictures. 
여기도 수술하지. 여기도 수술하는 거 있잖아. 응. 가운을 덮어놓고. 가난한 사람들에게 도움도 줬고 글자 모르는 애들에게 글자도 가르쳐줬던 그런 일도 했던 것 같아. 그지? 네. Through pictures, the miraculous history of a y n g w o n is preserved here at a y n g w o n History Museum. There is someone who collects and restores these old pictures while taking care of this museum. Elder p a e b y u n g s i m began working at a y n g w o n as a radiologist. He also cannot forget missionary t o p p l e whom he worked with for 10 years. t o p l e 선교사는 복음이 최우선이죠. 예. 환자들이 오면은 제일 먼저 묻는 게 예수 믿으십니까? 아 그렇게 물어요. 어, 예, 믿습니다. 하면 감사합니다. 안 믿습니다. 그러면 전도지를 항상 옆에 두고 전도지를 항상 진찰실 옆에 책상에 쌓아 놓습니다. 특히 아이들한테 소아마비 장애인 젊은 학생들한테 청년들한테 그렇게 많은 그런 복음을 전한 사역을 해 왔었습니다. His only desire was to make God known. This short-haired young man became a doctor and came to Korea because he wanted to become a missionary. He shared the gospel with great zeal. Hansen's disease patients suffered from the disease itself, but also fought with prejudice from people. To them, the gospel was literally good news. Since that day, They have never let go of the Bible. Missionary t o p p l e even got married in Korea. A children's doctor from Norway, Mia t o p p l e took care of the patients with passion. The t o p p l e s not only took care of the patients, but built a town where Hansen's disease patients can lead an independent life. The town was named after his Korean name, d o s o n g Village. A few Hansen's disease patients still live here. Missionary t o p p l e also began to equip a y o n g Hospital with modern equipment and built a new building too. Then he began to treat regular patients with Hansen's disease patients. This was his attempt to break down the prejudice against them. In 1981, the t o p p l e suddenly left Korea. The first 70 years were founded and served by foreign missionaries. But now, they believe Korea can sustain themselves. In Korea, there are many people who have been able to help the doctors. In Korea, it is a very difficult country in Africa. So, in Korea, 여기는 이제 나한테다가 인계를 하고 가겠다 이렇게 해서 나한테 내가 이제 원장 취임을 하게 되고 이렇게 됐는데 내가 한국 사람으로서 너무 부끄럽고 놀라운 일로 생각을 했죠. Director Yu g y u n g u n and his wife succeeded the Topples Ministry. Even when they wanted to give up, memories with the Topples held on to them. 파플한테 많이 배웠어요. 이 인간성이 아주 고와요. 크리스마스 때 같은 때는 나와 이제들 초대해가지고 자기 집에 다 식사하고 이렇게 우리도 배워가지고 떠난 뒤에 우리 집에서 나와 이제들 초대해갖고 다 식사 같이 하고 그래 지금 생각하면 그렇게 무의미하고 헛된 생활은 아니었구나 싶어서 하나님 앞에 감사. 감사하고 살아야지. 우리를 그렇게 귀하게 써서 하나님 감사합니다.
The wounded and hurt souls must have met Jesus in the couple's bright smiles. Through them, a beautiful footstep was recorded in the southern part of Korea. During the end of the 19th century, Protestant churches in the United States sent out the most missionaries. They sent a messenger to a small country in East Asia to share the good news of God. In Southeast United States, there is North Carolina. There lies a small and quiet city in its west called Black Mountain. Retired missionaries live here with their 130 years of Korean mission history. Our cook left. There is a picture we've seen from Aeongwon in this house. It gets the wall moist. The topples, over 80 years old now, are preparing to eat. Today's menu is Korean ramyeon. Yeah, uh, you see that two kinds, uh, the bigger soup bowls. That's great. You have to have lots of chop and mandu and all of that. They eat ramen once a week because they miss Korea very much. Of course, kimchi is never excluded. Mm. Well, great. I love kimchi. Remember that? <laughs> yeah, they were so cold. They were living in those Korean quarters. They needed kimchi to stay she warm. Would, mm. I well, I went there first in the, in the fall of 1959, and it was a very primitive. We had uh, rainwater that we collected in a cistern, and that was our water. It was uh, very little heating. It was very cold in the winter, so it was pretty tough. But uh, the good thing was that we were all Christians. The patients were mostly all Christians that were working in the medical field and, and we, we could understand and cooperate. We appreciated and respected each other. And so slowly by slowly, uh, things developed and, and uh, we were able to uh, get equipment in to do better work we brought x-ray and uh, other basic uh, medical equipment so that the work began to come up. And it was very exciting. The topples left for Africa after Korea. They worked as doctors and missionaries in Kenya for 20 years. Just like in Korea, they served them with great zeal. that we worked with, yeah. both uh, missionaries and Koreans. But what he remembers the most are moments yeah. at Aeongwon. And then here we are in the, <coughs> the laboratory, and we are uh, checking patients for leprosy in their skin. We take a cut in the skin and then scrape it and put it under the microscope to see if it has the leprosy bacillus. These are the unforgettable times. For Mia Toppel, the missionary from Norway, memories from Korea are unforgettable too. Yes, very, 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 very meaningful. I tell you frankly, I had never seen faith like I saw in Korea. He was working full time during the, had been praying with us with a very ill patient all night, all night long. I'd never seen that, never seen that. So that was faith, faith that uh, was the wonderful, wonderful thing that I saw and learned. The character of the Korean people was, was very, very, very impressive. A gift that I'll take very, very grateful for experiences like that. 
The Topples hadn't raised four daughters in Korea. These daughters, who also spent their teen years in Korea, also have special memories from the land. Their second daughter, Sissel, especially loved Korea and still has very vivid memories. And then we'd all sit around the dinner table and my father would fall, <laughs> fall asleep with his face into the food because he was so tired from operating and working all day. So that happened many, several times. We had no idea of any, that we were missing anything. We had a very rich life. Um, it was full. My father enjoyed his work. My parents were happy in their service. Um, the people were so grateful, so grateful for my parents. And that is, that is more um, wealth than any money or any material things is to be doing what you feel God has called you to. Although it was a foreign land, they felt great love over their 22 years. In which ways did he feel Korea was God's gift? We'd seen the church grow. We'd seen institutions like our hospital no longer needed missionaries. They could do it themselves. It, we felt as though it had been a wonderful time. And uh, we felt very fulfilled, very happy, and uh, satisfied that God had given us this time in our lives. And we, we still look back to our days in Korea. Those were the rich, happy, fruitful days. Not far from missionary Topol's house, there lives another witness of Korean missions history. So that, that bridge note sprouted. This is missionary John Wilson, 97 years of age. He also loves things related to Korea. And uh, I'll tell you a story about this horang over here. Every day his memory before, isn't as good as before, but he has a clear memory about his father. He was a skilled surgeon and he was really enjoyed surgery more than anything else. When he got to Korea, he wrote to his classmates in St. Louis, the medical school, he said, you ought to come out here and help. He said, last week, I took a cataract out of a woman who had been blind for 40 years. Now she can see for the first time. His Korean name was Woo Wa Soon. Missionary Wilson got married in Korea, had and raised seven children there. He began doing medical missions work at Che Jung Won in Gwangjushi in 1908. He was a blue-eyed doctor who led superstitious Koreans into a world of Western medical science. Formerly known as Gwangju Christian Hospital, Che Jung Won is located in Yangnimdong, Gwangju. In Che Jung Won's 100-year history, there is a picture of missionary Woo Sun. There is a dramatic story between memorials of missionary Wilson and Forsyth. It was times when Hansen's disease patients couldn't easily be treated. Dr. Forsyth found a lady with Hansen's disease lying on the street. But the townspeople wouldn't accept her. So Dr. Forsyth had to begin treating her in his kiln site. This was the beginning of Gwangju Leprosy Hospital. After that, in 1926, it moved to Yosu and was named Eangwon. So that makes missionary Wilson the founder of Eangwon. John Wilson was born in 1918 in Korea, the fifth son of missionary Wilson. This is Maria, this is Sarah, and that's me, and Bob died last week with... Of missionary Wilson's seven children, three of them became Korean missionaries after their father. John Wilson finished high school in Korea and returned to the United States to become a pediatrician. Then he returned to Korea 
to treat the poor at Chunju Presbyterian Medical Center and in other rural places, leaving a remarkable achievement of public health. Well, it's my koyang. It's, uh, my wife gets unhappy because all I can think about is Korea, and uh, well, I'm proud to be uh, part Korean. <laughs> That, that I was proud that I was really there, and I'm proud of the Korean people. Dr. John Wilson took after the poor even after his mission work in Korea. While he was still healthy, he farmed himself to send food to North Korea. The greenhouse he invented was installed in tuberculosis hospitals in North Korea since 1996, harvesting up to three tons of food every year. This 97-year-old, in love with Korea, is still a missionary at work. The mountains and the lake give you comfort here at Black Mountain. How did retired Korean missionaries begin to gather here in this community? The history goes back to the year 1892. This was the mission's headquarters for the Southern Presbyterian Church in America. Missionaries were trained and sent out to Korea from this town. During their mission service, they would often return here on furlough. Naturally, Black Mountain became like a second home to them. A few years ago, there were more retired missionaries here than now. There were about 30 of them, but about 20 missionaries are now with the Lord. All of these names are the names of people who beautifully served God in this land. Sunday night. Missionary Betty's house is buzzing with people. A huge dinner is prepared. Missionaries, missionary kids, and local community members gather at Missionary Betty's house. Betty Lois Linton is the host of this big meeting. The missionaries often gather for fellowship and sing hymns. It's like a huge family. Father in heaven, we thank you that uh, you are the God of the living, that you are the God of the resurrection and the life, and that all who call on your name. Bless this time together, we pray. Bless our fellowship together, and uh, just help us to serve you in your kingdom. Bless this food to our bodies, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Among them, the Lintons make up the majority. The Lintons are a famous missionary family who have served for four generations in Korea. Betty spent 40 years in Korea as a missionary. She married Hugh Linton, whom she met during her college years. With their three sons, she followed her husband to Korea, a third-generation missionary family. They arrived in Korea in the year 1954. It was the beginning of a new life. They settled down in Suncheon, Jeollanam-do, and began work to eliminate tuberculosis. In 1963, they found Suncheon Christian Clinic and even found tuberculosis sanitarium for those without family or friends. On the wall of the clinic at that time, we had made a big sign uh, with John 3.16 and it was the, our privilege to point out that uh, the greatest physician uh, is Jesus Christ. What I want to get across is the staff, the people who worked with the clinic have always been very uh, evangelical and have been very, very good at spreading the word. And even our doctors, most of them, occasionally we've had one that didn't, 
but most of them. It started with missionary doctors, and then the Korean doctors have been good at witnessing to the patients. And when the doctor talks to them, that means more to them than anything. Betty's husband, Hugh Linton, restlessly went through the mountains and remote areas to build churches and to spread the gospel. He always wore rubber shoes, so his nickname became the Rubber Shoe Missionary. It's true, he did like to wear komushin. He wore komushin even downtown until they started poking fun at him. They would say, Aigo, kugo pada. And then he was embarrassed. He was kind of shy. So he finally got, so he'd change his shoes sometimes. The buildings for Sunchon Christian Clinic and Rehabilitation Center, which they founded, are preserved to this day. Hugh Linton loved and was good at building houses. Not only did he build the clinics, but went on to build houses for his patients too. 아버님은 원래 건축 기사로 졸업하셨던 분이고 한국 나와서 여러 가지 일을 하셨어요. 우리 선교회에서 건축 일도 많이 맡았고 그래서 어렸을 때부터 내가 아버지 옆에 있으려면은 현장에 나가든지 창고에서 자동차 수리 같이 하든지 제가 원래 건축 전문인데 아 기계 만드는 것까지 아버지하고 같이 했으니까 많이 배웠습니다. 아버지한테서 그런 교육을 직접 받고. In 1984, he passed away from a tragic car accident. He was on his way to a new church with construction materials. And several days before, short time before he was killed in an automobile accident, we were just talking one night, and he told me that he felt like that his time in Korea was was very fulfilling was very he was he was very happy doing what he did and that was of great comfort to me to know that he had a his work in Korea had been a very satisfying thing for him working with his Korean the other Korean Christians to establish more churches An Moksanim was like a brother to him An Moksanim was his yeah he was his worker co-worker. They worked together in the country churches and um, they were just very close. He was his best friend and co-worker. Sun Chun, a land which people accept the logic of heaven. This land was the headquarters to Korean missions of Southern Presbyterian Church in America. Hugh Linton wanted to build this place just as how it was named. He had a vision of planting churches. Another pair of black rubber shoes that partnered with his vision. This is Pastor An Gi Chung. He and Hugh Linton went about everywhere, over the mountains and even to remote areas. They founded Operation Lighthouse in 1970 to evangelize to farming and fishing villages. The first thing they did was to investigate which areas were without a church and what young churches were in need of. It was their passionate vision to build a church every four kilometers. So, this is the first time I was going to be a church. 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 
A former naval officer, Hugh Linton established detailed strategies to plant churches. Then he planted over 300 churches in just 10 years. It was a miracle made possible through the two men in black rubber shoes. If he hadn't passed away like that, we would have built over a thousand churches, he says regrettably. The history of evangelization in Korea was fulfilled through their feet and not merely their words. We can say this about them for sure. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. The Linton family's faith is like a deep-rooted tree. Uh, is buried, as well as Charlotte Bell, uh, Linton, his wife. He was a uh, missionary to Korea. He first went in 1912, uh, where he was, he was uh, stationed at Kunsan. The father of Hugh Linton is William Linton. He first came to Korea when he was 22 years old and served Korea for 48 years. He was asked to become, after the Korean War, he was asked to become the founding president of uh, what was Tejon College, now known as Hanam University. Um, and so he made the move from Chunju up to Tejon for the establishment of that, that college. And um, actually at the time, he already knew that he had early uh, symptoms of cancer, but he felt like it was a very important work uh, that they were asking him to do. And so he really persisted there until right before his death. He was a missionary who let the world know about the March 1st independence movement during the Japanese occupation, and was even deported from Korea when he refused to take part in shrine worship. He especially felt building a Christian university was a vision worth trading his life for. That's why even a cancer diagnosis couldn't stop him. Missionary William poured in all of his passion to build Hanlam University. To honor his will, the house he lived in was preserved. Now, it's become an academy that studies Korean Christian mission history. William Linton, a missionary who truly loved Korea. He made a beautiful first footstep of Korean mission history, along with his father-in-law, Eugene Bell. His brightly shining heritage naturally flowed through generations. Linton에서 인돈 박사에서 인휴 휴 린튼으로 거의 그대로 그 선교 정신이 계승이 돼요. 한국 사회는 계속 변했지만 휴 린튼 시대도 아직 30%의 한국은 농촌 사회이고 여기에서 계속 가능성을 본 거죠. 그 유진 벨과 린튼의 그 선교 이상이 마지막으로 실현돼야 할 것을 농촌으로 초점을 맞췄습니다. 그 3대가 그러니까 흔들림 없는 어떤 한 사람 같아요. 그 3대가 사실은 동일한 가치를 갖고 동일한 현장을 고수했던 거죠.
Darkness can never conquer light. In the turmoil of modern history, their names were forgotten. But like light over darkness, these names awaken us once again. It was indeed a journey full of thorns. But they tell us it was a journey full of happiness. God led them, and God was with them. This is their history. This is God's history. These are the footsteps of 130 years. Because of your wholehearted love, we met Jesus. Because you have journeyed through this tough land, we were able to meet God. These missionary spirits have now flourished into North Korea missions. Missionaries' children are at the center of it all. The funny thing is, if we just say a few words, mm -hmm. and if you're in Korea, mm -hmm. then they say, oh, Koyang is Cholanamdo. I mean, they know from our <laughs> accent, <laughs> vernacular, yeah. exactly yeah, where we're from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Having spent their youth in Korea, their Korean is fluent. <laughs> <laughs> CFK was founded in 1995. It's a non-profit organization serving North Korea missions for over 20 years. They take care of sick patients and support food production. My joy of working with CFK is because I was raised with Koreans and have a special love for the Koreans. Um, and I think that my parents have taught uh, indirectly, if nothing else, the joy of service to others. I don't think my parents ever spoke lessons to us. It was, it was more what you saw and, and what you were surrounded by. And it was life's lessons. And again, you know, it would be very different if those patients were crying and saying, oh, woe is me, but no, they were so joyful. I think there's no, it's no mystery that I have such a love for the Korean people because they have enriched my whole life. That I want to show you. Uh, Working with Sissel in North Korean ministry is Rob Robinson, also a son of a Korean missionary. His father, by the Korean name Na Bin Son, helped the sick and the poor yes, after the Korean one. War. Uh, is of my father out on a country road talking to an older gentleman. He's obviously had his hungup, and um, it shows you the conditions of the roads. Yes, I think it, uh, you know, it very definitely came um, from my time there and from what my father had instilled in me as a young man. He loved personal evangelism. One time a man sat down beside him and he looked at him and he says, when he realized that my father could speak Korean very well, he said, 
what are you doing here? And my father responded, he says, I came here to talk to you. But from there he opened the scriptures and told him about Jesus Christ. And uh, so that's the way he was. Rob took after his father's heart and now helps North Korea with his construction abilities. Recently, his son took after him too. There are much things to do for North Korea. They want to be their friends and find out what they need and serve in that area. They send what they need with a prayer that they may come to know Jesus Christ. Yes, the family has a history and has uh, certainly relationships and, and uh, just a wonderful heritage. My mother-in-law, Betty Linton, was willing to help. And uh, this just seemed a really good place where people who understood Korea, who understood the language, understood the history and the complicated nature of it, could help and support and be involved. Hugh Linton's third son, James, quit his job as a builder to start a nonprofit organization called Wellspring. His ministry is to relieve drinking water shortage in North Korea by drilling wells. I'm very happy that my children love Korea. Every last one of them. North Korea, we have a number. And um, I'm also happy for those who felt like they want to continue to work in Korea. Retired missionaries are now part of the missions their children have begun. They still willingly take part wherever there is a need on the Korean Peninsula. I pray that I will continue to follow the example. And now that is being passed on to another generation. We'll make him known to many people, whether it be in North Korea or here in Black Mountain or wherever I may be. That is my prayer, that I will be faithful to him to the end. Because there are still people who have never heard of Jesus, they lift up another step to North Korea. Their only wish is to feel the endless love of God. There once was a pair of feet. They were the feet of obedience. Those feet walk the journey of a disciple to share the gospel. Where their feet stayed, there were the poor and the needy. Those feet went to them and became mirrors of Jesus. Through them, this land saw Jesus. Through them, the true joy of receiving Jesus was made known. This is a history of their many beautiful feet. I find that the Korean missionaries 
They have great zeal. They are very strong. And they have the sabyaptido. And they do things that are very wonderful. The problem is uh, they, they must be, it's very difficult not to have pride. You see, we're not the Father. God is the Father. And we must work together humbly. And now the Koreans, I think they have something like 40,000 Korean missionaries around the world. South America, Africa, everywhere, you'll find Korean missionaries. Continue what they're doing. Well, I did not <laughs> Jesus Alan Hasseman and I said Ino Moyo. She said Inom Maktumi. Inom Tucha Maktumi. Oh Rigana Nida Yit Mari Chopuria Sandida. Kam Sandida. Yes. Oh, look so nice. Oh, look so nice. Oh, look so nice.